They say this is a big rich town. Yeah. I just come from the poet's part. Hey, bad light city like I gotta make it. This is where it goes down. If I mess up, please forgive me. This is my shit. I'ma just hop right into the episode, okay? Andre and Julio gets picked off the street by the feds and Keisha gets called in too. Angie is slipping into the confessional, or so I thought. It's actually Greg's funeral and his boy is in the cut and sees her, you know, paying her respects to his body, which that bitch ain't got no respect. Terry Silver is this new attorney who's going to be the second chair for Jamie. Their argument is that Greg was killed because Ghost wanted to protect Tommy from being prosecuted for Lobo's murder. Um, they end up showing Jamie some pictures that were found at, at Greg's house and he says that he did not see that phone. So they like, you got some proof? And it's like, nah, nigga, of course not. <laughs> what proof could I have? I was illegally breaking into the nigga house, you know? Tommy is dropping off Tariq and Raina to school and Tommy and Tariq have a little heart to heart. Tariq basically says that he doesn't care about his mom or his dad right now. Tariq says to Tommy, um, you haven't been around us recently and dad doesn't care about his family anymore. And everybody mad as hell at Tariq and I'm just feeling like this is the result of Ghost and Tasha. Tariq ain't to blame. Tasha, Tasha and, and Ghost is the ones to blame. They did not give their son information. They thought they could hide their past, and they couldn't. Now their past has come up, and Kanan is using it against them and getting their son on his side. Um, Sax is talking to Julio, talking about Julio. Like, you gringo. He asks, how well do you know James St. Patrick? Uh, Julio talking about, can you really know anyone? <laughs> Question and Dre too. Um, Sax brings up the fact that Julio got a Toro's Locals tattoo on his neck. Andre and Julio are basically saying that um, Ghost brought them out of the hood and saved them from a life of crime and being murderers, which they're still murderers. They both are trying hard to convince them that James is not a hardened criminal. Of course, we got um, Mike questioning Dre and it is so crazy because it's like <laughs> Mike is questioning niggas and we know Mike is the one who's the murderer. Angie is questioning Keisha. Now this really pissed me the fuck off. Angie is asking Keisha when did Jamie move out of the house? Keisha talking about I think you know the answer to that one and Angie being all smug and shit and then she she talking about yeah, he moved out, but he moved back. She gonna say, well, he was sleeping on the couch in the office, I think. Like, you bitch. You dirty ass bitch. You gonna come up here with this little grand ass attitude? Knowing good and well you contributed to the deterioration of the relationship? Now, of course, she's not, the only, she's not all to blame. Ghost had a big hand in it, but what the fuck? You sitting up there acting like they wasn't a whole family before you came into the picture. When she asked her that, I was like, fuck her up, Keisha. Fuck her up. She need to get jumped. She need to get jumped or some old ratchet hood rat style. Tony is getting a state phone smuggled into him. And he's got some info on Ghost and Tommy. And I believe, and I've seen other people make these assumptions, this assumption that Tony is Tommy's dad. Josh, ghost old homeboy who used to work in the, um, who used to work at Truth is trying to snitch. But John is really not here for it. Josh is asking for full immunity for information against um, James. And John isn't really biting at it, but little does he know, Josh got some info for that ass. Angie reveals her idea to the group And she reveals it in a way that she acted like that's not what she really wanted to do. She basically told them that she thinks that she could figure out a way to get Tasha to be able to testify against James. But she doesn't want to do that to the kids. But then if you didn't want to do that, why the fuck did you suggest it to them? 
You already know they going for the death penalty. So then you're going to suggest Tasha be a, a witness and then act like you really don't want to do that. Knowing good and well you fucking do, you bitch. There are issues at the warehouse and Pitar is worried that something is going to go wrong. They got to get the product to somewhere. I forgot where they said. And Tommy says that he got this. Uh, Ethan at school being a little asshole talking to um, Raina. Talking about the fact that her father is on death row. Or her father could possibly be on death row. Tariq hems him up real quick and throws him against the wall. Uh, Ethan looking real shook like a pussy in front of his friends. Tariq ends up leaving school. Raina runs after him and she's seen on the street by a photographer crying. This ends up becoming a front page story. Um, saying that the kids are sad about, you know, what's going on with their father. Entourage attorney and um, Terry Silver are talking about the fact that there was the traffic stop that Ghost had with Greg. And they're saying, like, looking at the timeline that, that they've entered for the court, there is no mention of that traffic stop at all. And Angie knew because Ghost told her. So they're going to end up trying to get the DNA thrown out because the traffic stop was not put into evidence. Greg's boy Markham is visiting with the ADAs and he's saying that Greg was not the mole. Markham tells him that Greg felt that Valdez was the mole. He was trying to find evidence to pin her to being the person that was filtering information to Ghost and Tommy that whole time. He gives them the ultimatum that either they look into Angie or he's not helping them. Tommy is at Keisha's house and she is telling him all about what she talked to Proctor about. Keisha, oh my God. Why y'all got these weak ass bitches on this show? These women are weak. It's really ridiculous. So first we had Angie being a sucker ass bitch dealing with a married man. Like you knew he was married. Then it was like she was acting like a little sensitive ass bitch. She actually was encouraging him to leave his family. I, I feel like her actions were not trying to encourage him to be a good father to his kids. You was happy that he was all into you. And Keisha over here got some dick from Tommy and now she being a traitor ass bitch to her friend. Now granted, Tasha did do some shit, but she needed to filter that money. Whatever. Keisha gonna tell Tommy... You know she gonna snitch on us to protect her kids. What? What about you? Are you gonna snitch to protect your kid? Cause you don't got shit to do with it. So why would she snitch on you to protect her kid? I felt like we could say the same thing about Keisha. She's so desperate for some dick. I'm so sick of her. Tommy reassures her that no, Tasha ain't gonna do that. That's not gonna happen. And they have a little weak ass hug. Kanan and Tariq is leaning. Kanan teaching him how to make um, dummy drinks. Tariq is real stressed out about the family situation and Kanan is just telling him, just don't even worry about all that family shit. Markham goes to see Angie and um, he tells her that he saw her at the funeral. Angie says, yeah, she really didn't want the family to see her. And Markham says, oh, I don't think the family blames you, but I do. I was so happy. I was so happy that somebody was checking her. Somebody had her a little shook for a minute, right? He says that when she left Greg for Jamie, he became obsessed with him. That led to him being murdered. And if she never did that, Greg would be alive today. Markham wants her to testify that she's the mole. Um, have Jamie go to jail, get the needle, and then Greg gets to be buried with the colors that he deserves. He leaves and Angie's contemplating her next move. Julio is, comes to truth talking to Dre and he's asking him what the feds wanted. Julio basically shuts down a little operation with running drugs through the club. Dre sends away his boo Sue and tells Blondie to keep packing the pills. Markham is meeting with Sax and he wants him to help clear Greg's name. You know, he's telling him, you knew Greg. Listen, Greg didn't have anything to do with this. And he tells him about the secret recording and seeing what he can do about getting it, um, you know, entered into evidence. That shit was an illegal recording, so 
There ain't shit he could do. A sax is torn and it's possibly in the butthole. Tony is talking to Ghost and he's saying he knows. He knows that he's up to something. He knows who he really is. He's like, usually dudes come in here and they want everybody to know how tough they are. But you hiding it. Why? Ghost still trying to play that role like he don't know what's going on. But then Tony calls him Ghost. Shakes him up a little bit. And then he basically extorts $20,000 from him. And then says that he needs to deliver $20,000 every week thereafter. And this is, of course, so that his wife can get that um, cancer surgery that she needs. He also requests that Egan himself make the drop. Tommy is with Entourage Attorney, and Tommy is nervous as hell about Julio, Andre, and Keisha being called into the feds. Entourage Attorney is telling him to chill, like, yo, I got this. It's all good. Um, he just really wants him to keep him away from Tasha and Keisha and saying, you know, they good people. Once again, Entourage Attorney is getting drugs for his ex. Now, last week, he called her his wife. But he's calling her his ex at this point. And I'm just like, bitch, if you can't get your own drugs, then you shouldn't be doing it. You can easily just say no. How that bitch go out and find her own shit? What the fuck? Sax goes to meet with the judge and basically presents a hypothetical situation about having some kind of inadmissible evidence admiss admitted into the court. He gets told to fuck off. Goes tells entourage attorney about tony and his extortion plan um he finds out who he is and what he's in jail for angie shows up to the jail and says that she'd like a meeting with jamie alone once again Angie's cutting corners. She's doing these things and it's like, is this how it's going to be? Angie just really irking the shit out of me. That shit is really getting on my fucking nerves. Angie tells him to confess and that she will get his sentence reduced. She says that she's going to get Tasha to testify against him. We'll get her prosecuted and then what will happen with your kids? Why are y'all writing this? Why? Angie's doing too much. Angie's doing too much. I'm just... She has the fucking nerve. She has the nerve to say, we both know that when you want something, your family doesn't matter. Like, yeah, when it was benefiting you, that was cool, right? Oh, my God. Why are y'all letting her say these just real dick? She's a dickhead. And she's a fucking dickhead. Proctor, like, who the fuck she thinks she is? I know, right? Proctor should get his base head wife to beat her ass. And he knows that Mock would not send her in there because he would want that glory for himself. So he's like, yo, don't take no, don't take no um, deals from her. And I feel like once again, she's taking these liberties that she's not going to be punished for. The black lawyer wants Ghost to snitch on Tommy. Um, and I'm just like, man, if you don't get your scary ass out of here. Dre snitching on Julio to Tommy like a little bitch. Talking about he was with the feds for longer. Like, nigga... Dre doing some pussy shit, and I am, I'm not happy with it. Tommy says he already knew about Julio, and he just needs him to worry about moving that weight in the club. Um, Dre does tell him that Julio said that they need to stop moving the drugs, and Tommy just like, nah, I got shit to do. You just keep doing what I told you to do. Tariq is chilling in the house with his boy. He ends up texting the penthouse code, um, and then Kanan comes up, I guess, later, late at night and goes into the house. Now, the house they were in looked like Ethan's house, but I'm like, was that another day? Was that not the same house? Was that Ethan's brother? 
Um, did y'all just have a picture of Ethan? Um, I don't know. I'm confused. Ghost calls home and Raina is very sad. Um, she's just like, Dad, are they going to kill you? And she crying, he crying. Her fake crying was real whack to me. But, I mean, I don't know. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Sandoval is meeting with Markham. He's telling him that he tried to get Angie thrown under the bus, but that shit swerved. Markham tells him that Greg saw that Angie was the mole. Um, he says that he does have some evidence to discuss with him, but they gotta do it at another time and place. When Mike walks away, Markham has his file on the computer, and we know Markham got some skills with um, hacking and, you know, finding some classified files. So I feel like Markham is going to be the one to figure out that Mike was the mole. I feel like, I hope, I hope Markham is the one that's going to discover everything. Ghost is with Proctor. Um, he's basically asking him to get this paper out of his sleeve. And it's the address where Tony has said that he has to send the $20,000. Um... Ghost asked him if he saw that picture of Raina, and he blaming Proctor for her being in the paper. Talking about you put this shit in the media in the first place. Like, my nigga, really? You blaming me? Nigga, you sitting here in the orange jumpsuit. You the one that snuck into Greg's house. You the one that was lazy and had your fingerprints on the window. Come on. Get the fuck out of here. Raina goes into Tariq's room, right? Raina's like, you know, Tariq, what's going on? Like, why did you leave school? You could get suspended. We trying to keep everything good for dad. Ra Tariq is like, I don't give a fuck. He was like, that club shootout, Sean's death, it's all connected. He was like, we didn't, we didn't even know anything about them before we were born. Why didn't they ever bring us to where they used to live? Because they hiding something. He's like, you're supposed to be the smart one, Raina. Come on. Now get the fuck out of my way. Because he playing video games. And, yo, everybody is hating Tariq. I'm enjoying his character. This boy is a wonderful actor. He is a wonderful actor. He got everybody hating him. Um, and he delivering lines, like, with the realness. Because I believe he really wanted her to get the fuck out of his room. They're in the courtroom and the black attorney got that traffic footage from the stop and it's at a very convenient angle that I'm just like, it was just like, I kind of wanted it to be like across the street, like maybe like diagonal across the street so that it's like you kind of caught it and like you saw his car stop and then you saw Greg just push him into the frame but, it, you know, it was clear that it was them too. But it was just so convenient that the camera, like, just was right there, pointed right at the whole incident. But, hey, it's whatever. Entourage attorney is claiming that they violated his rights by not exposing evidence that could have been beneficial to proving his innocence. Proctor says that Valdez knew what happened. Um, she came up. The judge called her up to the um, stand. She says that she did know and she did tell them. John has to admit that he was informed by Angie that um, Greg did pull him over and they didn't believe it. So they're saying that they're if they're going to keep the DNA evidence, then they have to also reveal to the jury that the prosecution possibly withheld that inf information purposely. So that the jury is not biased against the prosecution, John agrees to drop the DNA evidence and that's a small victory for Ghost. Proctor tries to get all the charges dropped, but the judge is like, not so fast. We found a gun. Uh, we found his fingerprints. Like, chill. They had some little underground gambling spot and Tommy handing out orders. He gonna call these two niggas Tickle Shit and Dookie Shoes. Like, is that their names? Or was he just being an asshole? His truck and they trying to basically hide from the feds because the feds is watching them outside. They looking specifically for Tommy. John is talking to Angela and he basically apologizes for not believing her and says 
that he forgot that you were the most valuable on the team. Like, ew. I was so mad. I was so mad that he said that shit. Because up until this point, I feel like he hasn't really gave a fuck about nobody. He's assumed things about Angie and he's been right. And now he apologized to her and she just took it like, like she deserved it. Bitch, you don't deserve shit. Ghost requests for attorney Silver to come meet him at the jail. Um, he basically telling him like, you know, like stop judging me on some shit like that. The, um, dude's like, nigga, I see you. I see you. You not fooling me. You got these other cats around here fool, but you ain't fooling me. I mean, in so many words, that's what he said. He feels like James is not a good guy. And he's like, well, who do you think I am? He gonna touch his little orange jumpsuit and was like, this. This. Like, you belong here. And I need you to stop acting like you don't. Because you do. I know it. I could tell. I could see it. You belong here, nigga. Now. I'm going to take your money and I'm going to use it so I can further my career with people who are actually innocent. He like, thank you for the money, though. Terry really sees that Proctor got some extra shit going on. Now, is it just the fact that he's getting drugs for Tommy? Because I feel like y'all wrote that in this season just so we could feel like, Proctor has other ties to them other than their um, being their attorney because there was no hint in season three that Proctor was getting drugs from Tommy. I don't like that. I don't know. I just don't like that added in. Well, anyways, that's all. I did a quick review. Um, I'm a little late with it. Um... But it was a good episode. It was a good episode. I want to see what happens next week. Um, I feel like Dre going to die. Dre or Julio going to die. And I'm confused as to why Tommy isn't closer to Julio. You know? Like... It's like Tommy is looking at Julio like he's a traitor, but Julio ain't never been that. And you used to hate, go you he hated Dre. So why are you treating Julio like a redheaded stepchild? I'm not liking how Proctor is now getting drugs from Tommy. And now it just seems like that's the reason why he's so invested in proving his innocence because... Is there another reason besides he feels like he's innocent? Because I don't feel like... I'm tired. I'm tired. Let me fucking edit this video and try to upload it for y'all. <laughs> before y'all think I ain't coming up with no review. Well, um, thank you for watching. I will see you later for another review of something else. Peace out.